it's an LED lamp. Not just any old LED lamp, but our favourite type, a dead LED lamp. And even better, it's a dead Poundland LED lamp. And a ridiculously big one at that. I actually traded my brand new working one with a local fisherman called Jiffy because he had this faulty one and I wanted to see the faulty one more than I wanted to see the working one. So taking a look from the outside, first, as Jiffy spotted, there is liquid in here. Little droplets of liquid. Does that mean there's an electrolytic capacitor in here that has exploded? Or is it because liquid has got in and caused corrosion in some way through a lamp holder? This isn't uncommon for water to drip in through ceiling roses. But Jiffy said this was actually on a cable that was slung on a hook over to the ceiling rose. So it's unlikely water got in that way. The filaments, there are eight of them, and they're wired as two in series, and they're kind of bridged together. Um, and then the whole lot in sort of parallel fed top and bottom by the look of it. Okay, radio. So let's get into the bottom of this and explore. So I'm going to use the spudja to try and remove the little rivet from the bottom. If I can. This is a very big lamp. It's very unwieldy. I may have to use something sharper than the spudger for this. It's kind of recessed. Hold on. I shall stick a pointy knife in at the risk of stabbing myself here. Oh, almost. Oh, that is not easily coming out. I may have to just basically start taking it apart the normal way. I'm going to break this blade, haven't I? I would pause at this point, but you know what? There's no point. Because, yeah, you can skip forward if you want to the point that you see open right. Tell you what, I'm not having any joy with that at all. So I'm just going to get the side cutters. I'm going to nibble here. Being careful to support the the base and not hold the lamp just in case it bursts because that would be quite dramatic for one's ha hands. Oh, <laughs> crazy. Uh, right. Maybe I'd be better using smaller snips for this just to nibble in better. I shall try this pair of slightly bluntish ones. They're tangled under stuff. Let's see if I can cause an avalanche. I did cause an avalanche. That's perfect. So these are bluntish. These might be too blunt. Oh, there we go. There we go. So let's peel this away and see if we can get the circuit board out and see what's inside. Nibble, nibble, nibble. For those saying, why don't you use a pipe cutter to cut around this? Uh, I don't think that would really work too well. Because uh, it's kind of an irregular surface, and also um, it is uh, kind of soft, and the pipe cutter might just sort of basically roll around in that. Uh, my apologies if there's loud popping, clicking noises. That sometimes happens. The microphone picks up the scrunching noises as I tear into things. It's got a destruction sensor. Right, we're getting better on here, I think. Someone has suggested that uh, something like azopropanol might actually dissolve the lamp cement in here. I've never tried that. Maybe I should try that and just see what happens. It's always very hard getting it out. Uh, certainly you can't use heat to get out because it is the same lamp cement that they used to use in the old days on the, oh, I can smell this, on the tungsten lamps. And they used to get very, very hot. So heat is not going to, be, I mean, it's designed to handle the heat. Uh, what if I go back to the bigger schnips now? This is proving quite irksome. As I say, you can fast forward across this bit if you don't want to see the carnage. And it is actually quite significant carnage here. It's not coming off easily, is it? It's got one of those little plastic housings under it designed to uh, protect the electronics from short against the base which is good very good oh yeah this is going to be making loud popping noises my apologies for that i can't really do much about that it's just what it does oh this is rubber this is rubber under here i wasn't expecting that if i'd known that i'd have just been doing this right i can cut that wire now and pull off the rubber cap to reveal a uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor that is completely spewed out down here, right? Tell you what, give me one moment, I'll take this stuff out of this base and we'll take a closer look at it. One moment, please. 
and resume. I was hoping to fix this lamp, but that has been scuppered slightly by the fact that the uh, dume or dumet uh, tails that come through the pinch here are spot welded onto little wires that don't take solder very well. And while trying to solder onto one, uh, it's, the spot weld came off where it attaches to the dume metal. Uh, so the only way to actually fix this is to somehow get a connection up there or smash the glass and uh, then just use the central LED portion. Maybe I'll do that. But anyway, I shall put this out of the way and you can marvel at the singed remains of the circuit board. I'll just put this out of the way. Loud explosive popping of glass in the background. So, major carnage in this. The electrolytic capacitor has spewed its guts out then. That's what the liquid was. And the series resistor, the fusible resistor, has done its job. Noting that the heat shrink around it is also just burnt up. There is a little metal oxide resistor in this, which is quite interesting. So, taking a look at the circuit board. Uh, this is the... I'll zoom down a bit. Maybe not that much. This is the mains incoming supply here. It's got the live and neutral going here with the, the series resistor and the metal oxide resistor across that. It goes through the bridge rectifier uh, and goes through a diode. And, you know, I'll just point out the components, then I'll show you the circuitry. Here is the 10 ohm cent resistor for the LED current. Here is the 100 ohm cent resistor for the dimmer compatibility component. Uh, there is a linear current regulator. Uh, but on the other side, there is another linear current regulator. I'm not sure the number because there's a big burn mark from the resistor. Uh, the other one on the other side that I said was for dimmer trickery or power factor correction trickery has a couple of resistors, basically 10k, 220k resistors in parallel, so 10k. Uh, there's this mystery component here. I do not know what that is. It's in the series of the LEDs. There's the capacitor that blew up and then a 560k resistor across that. Noting this not very good solder joint there, that is the connection to the LEDs and it doesn't look that great. It looks possibly as though that was arcing. I wonder if this initiated a problem with that. Very strange. Anyway, the schematic. That's what you want to see. It makes more sense. Or does it make more sense? This one might not be far... Everybody. But anyway, let's go through it. The incoming supply has that fusible resistor, which is fused. I'll make a guess. 10 ohm. That seems reasonable enough. There's a metal oxide varistor across it. Metal oxide varistor, also called a VDR, voltage dependent resistor. It's for clamping spikes and transients. There's the bridge rectifier. And then the circuitry splits into two sections. It has this resistor network, a couple of resistors, and then a linear current regulator. And then it's got a diode over to the LED circuitry with its smoothing capacitor. I think this is either for cheating power factor to make it look better than it is by causing current at the bottom of the sine wave. If you have a, a full wave rectified sine wave, the LEDs, because you're quite a lot in series, only tend to draw current at the top of that. So two things can happen there. The... Power factor looks terrible because not current is not being drawn across uh, these areas of the sine wave. But also, uh, it can cause dimmers to drop out. If the dimmers are re the triac type that re require continuous current flow, continuous current flow to latch, then the fact there's no current flow there can cause them to uh, jutter, jitter, stutter, and cut out and, and flicker, or just not work at all. So what this does is that this effectively, while the LEDs are off, this is on and it's uh, limiting the current through a, a fairly low level and just acting as a resistive load across the supply. Then it goes through the diode, uh, through the LEDs. The LEDs have a capacitor across them for smoothing. This also makes me think it's for dimming because normally with these type of circuits, the capacitor would be over here, but it's over there across the dimmers. It may be for dimmability. I'm not sure. I didn't check that. There is this mysterious component. I haven't a clue what that is. It's marked B2501. I did not find anything similar. It's got a uh, the what looks like the facility for a resistor here to set some threshold. That resistor would have been basically there. 
and going to that capacitor, and it does look almost like a reference voltage. I don't know what that's for. Um, in Rush Limington to LEDs? I'm not, no, I don't think so. It's very strange. Anyway, then you've got all the LEDs, and then, rather oddly, you've got two linear regulators in parallel with just one common resistor, and it's not like they're the same. I think they're similar regulators. This one, the uh, one with the eight pins is a dual regulator, and it's an SM2082EG. The one on the other side that has uh, the skid mark right over the number, I'm going to guess it's an SM2082D, which is just a, a single regulator version, a bigger package. But they've got them in parallel with a single resistor, which is odd. Normally I'd expect them to have its, each one have its own resistor, uh, but they don't. There is also a little capacitor across those for clipping any sort of like sudden voltage change that could result in a current spike through them. But here's the odd thing with the linear regulator for the uh, power fetch correction or the dimming. Uh, before the LEDs turn on, current is flowing through the circuit and it's got a resistor that sets a fairly lowish current, about a tenth of what the, is going through the LEDs, and that is dissipated across these resistors. But as, because it's then attached to the top of this resistor, as soon as current starts flowing through uh, the LEDs and the regulators, it will start flowing through this resistor, and you'll see typically about 0.6 volts, I think it is, across that for the current uh, sensing. And that means that will raise up, and then the current through this will be very low. So effectively, when the LEDs come on, this virtually turns off. Um, so it really is just filling that gap in the sine wave until the LEDs come on. And that is it. Quite a complex and weird circuit. I've never seen such a... I've never seen three linear regulators on the one board before like that. Particularly two like this with a... I'll zoom out a bit. Particularly two regulators like this that are basically in parallel with a single sense resistor. Very strange circuit. It was quite hard to reverse engineer because of that. The reason for the diode is there so, is so that this can sort of ride the sine wave without being affected by the uh, residual uh, charge on that capacitance. And that is it. So uh, thanks to Jiffy for uh, letting me exchange for that faulty lamp. It was much more interesting than a fully working one. Um, hopefully the other one will last longer, but uh, I would say that the burn mark on the circuit board around the lead from the um, the LEDs almost suggests there's a bit of arcing going on here, and that may have been what caused problems. Yeah, strange. I don't know what that component is. It's a mystery. It's just riling me. You may detect that. I just, I tried so many search combinations, I could not find what that is. It's a strange mystery component. Uh, but that's it. Uh, the mystery of the Poundland exploding capacitor go boom type lamp. I don't really know what made the capacitor go boom. It's rated 400 volts. It's a death beam capacitor. So seriously, they're supposed to be able to withstand stuff like this because their normal function is to destroy humans with 5G death beams. So they're usually quite rugged. But maybe it was just heat in the base that built up and caused that. Don't know. But interesting. Well worth reverse engineering. <laughs>